Hello! Welcome to another one of my lesbian advice, lesbian LGBT discussion type of videos. If you haven't seen any of the other videos, I will leave a link in the description. So you can go and check those out as well. You don't have to watch them in a particular order, don't worry about that. And a lot of people that watch my channel haven't subscribed to, them, to me, but they've watched like multiple videos. So please subscribe to me, it doesn't cost you anything. You know, it's just clicking a red button, but it helps me out a lot, but you don't really have to do much, you know? And you'll get notified of new videos of mine if you uh, are interested in my content. So, I wanted to make this video pretty much about how lesbians fantasise and dream about lesbian relationships in a little bit of an inaccurate way. I've done it as well. When I was like first starting to date women, it was the same. So <laughs> I just wanted to talk about it basically because not many people talk about these topics and I just think it's important. I just, I just do. I'm making this video to address the ideology of overly romanticised kind of lesbian relationships because it needs to be looked at and addressed fully for what it is because sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not great you know, like, it's almost as if lesbians are under this illusion where things have got to be great and amazing all the time and if not then they're doing something wrong when they're not I've spoke about this one before so I'm just going to touch on it briefly but in the early stages of lesbians, um, you know, dating girls, they seem to just date any girl they like, you know, that's available, which is really dumb, it's a bad mistake. But if they've dated quite a few guys um, in their kind of denial period of um, being close to coming out, then when they go to date a girl, they're most likely to date a girl that just has nothing in common with them at all or even just one thing or the chemistry just isn't right like a girl that they don't even like that much in that kind of way but um, the only reason why it feels right to them is because they've gone from a boy to a girl and because it's a girl it feels right to them regardless of the person's interests or if they've got that strong um, of an attraction to someone but because it's that jump between being with boys and just feeling nothing and then dating a girl and feeling more than they felt with guys they kind of get confused and they're like oh maybe I do like this girl and they actually don't as much as they think you know like when I was 20 I finally came out as lesbian after dating quite a few men and I did that I dated a girl who I didn't even that like that much you know and the only reason why I felt right is because she was a girl and other people spotted it and they noticed and I've noticed it with a lot of lesbian relationships where they'll date a girl just because it's a girl <laughs> you know it might sound silly but it actually happens a lot but as well People think that like when girls like, that are in a relationship kind of sleep next to each other that they're really sweet and they're like snuggling, kissing, being loving, you know, playing with each other's hair, just being adorable. It's not always like that. Like I'm not kidding when I say this but let's say if I've had three girlfriends one out of the three didn't ever sleep next to me. It was a pretty short relationship. I'm going to make a separate video on that. But the two girls that did get to sleep next to me that I was with for a long time, like my first ever girlfriend, it was like four and a half years I was with her. And then with my most recent ex, I was with her for what? was it a year and a quarter so 15 months quite long very long but with those relationships I yeah 
I have this problem where I don't really sleep right away. I find it difficult to get to sleep. And they, I don't know how, but they would get to sleep really quickly. Probably because they were so tired. They had quite a demanding life when it came to career, kind of. And stuff that they do in general in their life. And they're like... It's made me more strict with relationships now. Like, if I got into a relationship with a girl now, if they left me to literally cry and sob next to them, I, I would have a discussion with them the next day and say, look, you can't do that. And if they do it again, it will result in me breaking up with them. Because I have to know my worth, I have to know how I'm meant to be treated and I know more now than I've ever known so far on how I should be treated so there was one incident where I I basically my ex wanted me to go to her house like when she was my girlfriend and stay oh well no she wanted to be to go for the day and it was close to being New Year's and I was like, no, no, I'll just wait, you know. Because I had, like, you know, your gut instinct tells you not to do something. My gut instinct was saying, wait till she comes over for New Year. Don't go over there. You know, just, just wait. But she used to get really upset when I didn't meet up with her. She'd be really upset. And I was like, okay, fine. But on the day, I was going to say to her, like, I can't. Because my gut instinct is still just saying no but I got into a mini kind of argument like a short argument with my parents over something I can't even remember what it was and I just left I just headed for the door and left and went to my ex's house or my then girlfriend and on the way on the train because I had to catch two trains you know um when I was getting closer and closer to the town that my then girlfriend lived in, the train said, oh, um, we're having a problem with the overhead lines, like, going that way, so we have to stop and go back to Birmingham. And I was like, ah. So I was like, okay. And they stopped at Wolverhampton, actually, now that I remember. And they put a bus service on. Like if you're from England, it's a coach. But basically in America, they call it just a bus, like a big one. So I had to get in that. And then I got to a house. And then I was like, what am I going to do? Because before that, when I was on the train platform in um, Wolverhampton, I rang my then girlfriend and says to her, I think I'm going to turn back. I think I'm going to go completely back to Birmingham and I'll just see you another time. And she was like, no, please meet up with me. And I was just like, okay. Fine. I'm halfway there now. And then I went. And then I was like, oh, are we kind of... We went out somewhere. I can't even remember what we did. And I was like, oh, you know... I had to check the train times a lot and see if a train would um, come along and take me back to Birmingham. It, it didn't and it got later and later and later and I was like, I'm going to have to stay at your house. And I have anxiety of staying at other people's houses, especially when their parents are there. And it was really awkward, really awkward. Like her mum thought that we'd lied when we hadn't. and. She just, I was really upset about it and I was literally sobbing next to her and she just didn't really do much to help, really. Same as my first ever girlfriend. There was a time where I was sobbing next to her, she just... Mm. <laughs> so, that is kind of the reality of lesbian relationships sometimes. They're not always as nice to you. And as well, girls, like, people think that girls that go on dates with girls don't do what guys stereotypically do where they push them into doing like sexual stuff with them um sometimes it sometimes they do like i've had girls i've had girls do a lot very quickly like as i've said before 
lesbian relationships like lesbians are hardcore where they're like relentless with relationships and the relationship progresses very quickly and then it's over and it can leave you really startled and heartbroken and just like lost it can be very difficult you know i'm not saying that lesbian relationships aren't amazing because they are but Lesbians have got to just stop looking at these videos of lesbians being all cute and sobbing their hearts out over it and dwelling over the fact they don't have a girlfriend all the time because there is so much more to life than that, you know? But, um, yeah, so one of my exes, on the first date, um, she was kind of like we met up and two of her friends came with her just to check if she was all right like just to check i wasn't a catfish to check i was a real person basically which i thought was really nice and then they're like okay you know you're a real person you have fun you know and then they went off somewhere you know they went around birmingham and me and this girl went on a date to I think it was Waterstones. We went to Waterstones. We were looking at books because she loved um, a particular genre of books that I wasn't really that into, but I was trying to learn and understand. But um, we were chatting and we had tea. Well, she drank tea. I don't drink tea. Anyway, stuff like that. It was a really nice day actually, but she was upset that I didn't kiss her on that first date. But I explained to her that I had some kind of cold flu coming along and I didn't want to pass it on to her and the days and days went on and she was like when are we gonna do it you know and I was by this point I had a really bad flu and I was stuck in my bed I couldn't move and one of the days I felt a bit better and she was having a barbecue with all of her friends where she lives and she was like can you get the train and come down to me I was like yeah okay we met and we had a really nice time actually it was pretty good but whilst we were waiting for her to drive to um, her friend's house for the barbecue, she took me up to her room and we were chatting and then she kissed me and I was like, I'm still really quite unwell. And she was like, you're worth it. I hear that a lot as well with like relationships, They're like you're worth it. Like, let me have your germs. And it's really weird, but you know. <laughs> And the pressure kept going on and on to do stuff. And I really, I just didn't want to because I was so unwell. I didn't have energy to do anything really, you know. And the second I got better health-wise, I was staying in summer accommodation at university because I was doing a lot of media creative stuff in the city that year. And it was a single bed and she was complaining because the accommodation wasn't great. I was like, well, it's temporary. Like, if you wait another week, I'll move into the accommodation I'm in for, like, almost a year and it's got a double bed and it's a lot bigger. Like, what? Just wait a week. She wouldn't wait, she wouldn't wait a week. She made me go back to my um, accommodation. And we did it then, and I was just like, I don't really want to do this. Like, I was just sat on the bed for like an hour, and I was like, I don't really want to. I was just like, mm, I wasn't really that enthusiastic. You know. And girls have pushed me into that before, but I'm going to make a separate video on that, I think. Because that story is way too long. <laughs> and uh, last week, I made a really long video about lesbian stuff. So, it's just going to be so long. I don't want it to be really long. <laughs> but um yeah and then I went out on a date with another girl who yeah was turned on and it was very obvious that she was and I was just like oh my god what do I do because it was becoming too evident to people around us and it was awkward so I had to do something about it a bit and it was awkward and then on the second date one of my best friends had to book us a hotel and it was just it was too fast and I didn't want the relationship to go that fast so soon and I should have spoke up about it but I didn't 
obviously I gave consent to all of these situations, so nothing is like serious, nothing's rape or anything, gosh no. But it's just, it's really hard to, it's just hard, you know. Let's, like girls, girls like stuff too, it's not just men that are desperate for it, girls, girls do their fair share, trust me. You know, but um, yeah, gosh. I think that's all. I think that's all I'm going to say for this video. Because it's really long. Again, if any of you have any questions, need any advice, let me know. And um, post it down in the comments. Or if you want it to be private, then message me on Instagram. Not going to lie to you, I get a lot of messages on Instagram. I don't know why, but people pick Instagram to uh, contact me on. Only contact me if you kind of... Um, have a genuine question, like, don't just put hey, or don't just put hey, how are you, because I'm like, well, I don't know who that is, and I can't just reply, because when I press the accept button, that, that isn't something I can change, like, I can't put them back into the message requests part of my messages, like, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that, you know, so... It's kind of like that. And also, I get added into really inappropriate group chats on Instagram, and I'm like, what the hell? So I have to delete them right away. I think I've mentioned that in a video before, but I'm not sure. But anyway, I hope you're all managing to stay safe still in this pandemic. It's just getting ridiculous at this point, to be honest. Like, oh, like I looked at, like I was scrolling through my videos on my channel and you can tell that a lot of them have been filmed at home over the past four months because of obvious reasons and it's just yeah <laughs> it's it's hard it's hard to make video content when you um are in a pandemic but i'm gonna try i've already planned my next video like i probably look a bit tired today but that's because um, something's been going on in my life that I have to kind of um, give a lot of attention to. It's not a relationship, but it's something and you'll find out next week anyway. So, anyway, subscribe if you haven't already, like the video, comment if you want to, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.